Get on. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Justin Our GI Joe Show, episode 49. Um, this is kind of going to be a little talk about with customizers. And to be honest, I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel. These were my, <laughs> my first two choices, um, especially Matt. Promise you, he was dead last. So that just tells you. Five minutes ago, literally. Do what? So you asked me like five minutes ago. What? Do I, I know. I, I just played it too late. And I'm like, I gotta get somebody on here. Um, Fred is not with us tonight. Um, it's his father's birthday party. Who knew at 90 years old you'd still be having birthday parties? Right. Who knew? But let's get down to uh, some fun and business and uh, introduce both our guys here. Um, Oz, tell people about yourself, uh, where they can find you at. And, um, you know, we'll start with that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm on Facebook, uh, Rob Osborne, uh, Instagram, uh, Ozzy92YoJo. Uh, let's see, uh, his tank course and OG 13, especially and everywhere else, I guess not Twitter. I don't do Twitter. What do you get against Twitter? Well, I'm going to tweet about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the fact that I can't figure it out. Nothing really. <laughs> uh, Matt, go, tweet. <laughs> Matt, go ahead and introduce yourself and all your personas. And so everyone knows who they have. To yell at sure. next time. <laughs> Make sure I have my face, so if you see me at the next con, you can beat me up. I'm right. Matt uh, of uh, Short Bus Customs, uh, a member of the Mayhem Customs Group. You can find me at. Uh, let me think here. His tank under Short Bus Customs, OG13, Short Bus Customs. I believe Serpentor's Lair at Short Bus Customs. I believe I've been on there in a while. Uh, Joe Customs. Uh, short bus customs as well. Really, I kind of keep the name the same everywhere. So you find me Facebook under the same name. All right, so make sure you do the underscore short underscore bus underscore customs with a K to find me. There's a quite a few other short buses out there, unfortunately. I uh, got started. You know, <laughs> Who would imagine enough <laughs> short bus customs out there? Literally or figuratively, but yeah, no, not, definitely not the best. Just some of the more unique. We'll say that. Okay, right. that's. My little spiel. So, you know, feel free to carry on. Right. All right. Um, I wanted to throw this out here. Uh, Playful off the Hestake forums uh, had posted in the uh, thread that uh, today is the real day upon which America's greatest toy invention turned 55 years old. So, apparently, today is actually the birthday of G.I. Joe. I guess that wasn't there like a G.I. Joe day like a few days ago we were all talking about? I can't remember. I'm not sure. I don't, I really, I happy don't birthday, know. Mr. Bazigian. Oh, oh, I don't know. Happy birthday. Whatever. Don, whoever, I forget. Who. Yeah, no, it's like every day nowadays, is, every day is something different. Like today's National Pizza Day, today's National Spaghetti Day, today's National Mexican Day. I mean, it's ridiculous in how many national days are cookie day. I like cookie day. Right. So, um, customers, I, Customizing figures today versus what we had before, you know, back in the uh, 80s and 90s seem to have really picked up a lot um, where a lot of people who buy retail or even con club exclusives are not very, are, you know, let's be, let's, you know, call, you know, call what it is. You know, a lot of people don't like what they get. So they customize it to a certain degree. Um, is that, kind of the way of the future now to what we're going to get. So, you know, even though when you say customization, you, know, you get people who are casting parts as well. So it's kind of like, is this kind of where we're heading towards, you think? Uh, go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, so what do you say we're headed towards? I mean, I don't know that we're going to get any new Joe product anytime soon, right? So as, Well, right now, I mean, we're not. Right. I mean, well, well, hold on. Hold on now, though. If you want to get current Joe product, you got to go to the GI Joe collector's page because this is going to be the last time you get it in this format ever. Now, never. These ever again. Ever. <laughs> never. Hurry up. They're going fast. Hurry up. Oh, yeah. They're going so fast. <laughs> Wait, but yeah, I think, I mean, 5% off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, let's look at it as, you know, a lot of people, you know, like they'll get one figure from the club or retail. And they don't like the colors or it's not the color they want 
or it doesn't have something specific on it, can they redo it? So, I mean, is that kind of where a lot of Joe fans are going now is, is either A, customizing themselves, or B, having them sent off to be well, done, or I, purchasing it? Honestly, I mean, I'm not super big on the figures, but just from being on the forums and seeing everyone's reactions to the FSS, I mean, they, they have the mock-ups where people are like, yeah, these are awesome. It looks so good. I mean, I can't wait for this. And then as soon as they show the figure in hand, it's like such an utter disappointment of everything that it isn't supposed to be. So I honestly feel, you know, it's up to the customizers to take that mock-up art, the art that everyone was so hyped for, and to make it exactly like that so they get the figure they wanted and stop getting the disappointment of these figures that don't live up to the standards. Or on the other coin, on the side of the coin, figures that, we wish they would have released or the wish they would have done and they never did or they never seemed to grasp, you know, this would be a popular figure. It's up to the customizers to do that figure and make it and then hopefully maybe almost ignite some inspiration for some of the uh, manufacturers or someone else to say, you know what, that's a good idea. That'd be easy to make. I could make more of these and, you know, I could help facilitate, you know, filling a void in the in the community to you know help other people fill their collections i feel the customizers almost help do all the r d for hasbro and the other toy lines where we use our imaginations and be outside of the box where they got the, these guys that are paying paying the big bucks to think up ideas and you know shoot trying to do that you know day in and day out can be super tiring they can't come up with original ideas where we're doing it for fun we're doing it for passion we have our imaginations we have our creativity running wild where we're just coming up with all kinds of stuff and sh everything might not be what they're looking for but there might be that one idea that they're like oh my god this is gold this is exactly what we were thinking of it'd be so easy to rep you know replicate why didn't we think of this because you know yeah you know they don't have that 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 creativity always flowing where you know like rob and all the other guys out there were constantly always thinking of ideas and you know thinking of things man i wish they made that like this or hey you know what I can make this figure exactly how I want. I know exactly what parts to use. And it, it would turn out way better than anyone had ever hoped. You know, I, I feel that would be, you know, that, that kind of. Yeah. Helps. And I think you're right. I think you're right, Matthew. I think uh, sometimes the, the R and D is being done by uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, customizers. Like I, I think of like think tank toys and other people that have cobbled together some great parts and pieces. And then, um, Next thing you know, you know Hasbro or the club is coming out with a, uh, you know, figure that's pretty close to that build, which is cool. Uh, I don't, I never minded that. Uh, I can tell you myself, there's a lot of people that do take their club figures and modify them. I happen to be the guy that doesn't, largely so. You might have seen my payload lately, but all I did for that was add another helmet and then put like a harness over them to kind of change them up a little bit. Other than that, to me, if the club figure or the Hasbro figure for the most part isn't good enough. I'll just make my own completely and, uh, and you know, not even use the base itself. Uh, it, otherwise, if it's good enough for me, I'll keep it as is. I tend to keep that distinction myself. Um, when you take your, um, figure, like you did your payload where you took the helmet and everything, when you know you're spending that kind of money for a product, you know, for a figure, one figure alone, do you feel kind of bad in doing that? Or you're kind of like, well, it's my figure. I'll do whatever I please with it. You know, uh, feeling bad, no, but spending that kind of money to then say, I'm going to replace the legs or I'm going to cut this figure apart and put new arms on it. No, thanks. I'd rather build mine from scratch. Um, but like with the payload, all I did was add something to it that I could take off if I ever wanted to resell it or heaven knows as soon as I kick the bucket, my wife's got all this stuff out on eBay. So, you know, right. it'll actually retain its value. Um, but other people I do know that cut and add a little bit and paint and tweak. I think I've done that to one figure. Um, it was, what was the figure that came out? The uh, Kindle, the Kindle chick. Uh, what's her the name? The 50th one? Yeah, 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 yeah. She came with uh, Heavy Duty? Yeah, exactly. And her name's escaping oh, me, but I, uh, I fixed her eye a bit and I, I made the scar darker. Um, I had fun with that one, but it was also a $10 Hasbro figure. It was not a $40 club figure. Right. So, right. yeah. yeah. Hard, hard mm -hmm. to justify customizing when the initial purchase price is so steep. And mm -hmm. in most regards, customizing has a, a market, but it's very niche. And depending on what you do to it, will either increase the value or 
severely hurt the value where if it's a club figure which already has value which people will like regardless of who it is if you tamper with it you can either you know maybe the person that likes it will really like it or for most part they're like i oh, it's you know it's modified i don't want it and then you completely shoot the value and then you're stuck with a you know almost completely worthless figure that you know you could have tried something else and not you know messed with it yeah hey, I, uh, go ahead. rob the um uh, Chris said it was stiletto you're talking about. Yeah, stiletto, exactly. Yep. yep that's who it was. I got a 44-year-old memory, Mike. Not do me yeah. any favors. <laughs> um, now, Oz, we talked about your figures. You do mainly figures. Now, Matt, you do mostly vehicles. Now, yeah. a vehicle, most vehicles are, are kind of cheaper, maybe. Are they cheaper than figures, mostly, that you mess with? It really it just depends on uh, depends on what you want to do and what what vehicle. I mean, like you know, for the the Joe Fest coming up, you know, I decided to do wolves, which wolves were insanely popular. They're super plentiful and they're cheap, so that was one of the reasons I went with them because they're so easy to find and I don't have to spend sixty bucks on a you know a mediocre wolf and like oh god you know I got to put X number of dollars in this to you know even try to you know make it nice. Uh, but it's, you know, certain ones, and then, you know, there's also ones that were maybe a little bit rarer or ones that were a little bit harder to find that, man, you kind of, you know, start thinking, is it worth it? Do I really want to delve into this? You know, do I want to touch it? Uh, you know, of course I've seen guys that, you know, redo flags and defiance and yeah. crazy stuff like that. I mean, honestly, for me, certain grail pieces, I don't touch regardless of the condition, uh, regardless of you know, what I have plans for. Some of that stuff is like, you know what, it's too rare, you know, even if it's super beat up, it's like, ah, I won't touch that. Plus the initial cost of a lot of stuff is so high that it's not fun because I don't, I feel like I'm already kind of behind the eight ball and putting money into it because it's already cost me an arm really to get initially. Uh, but really try to find, you know, I try to find, you know, maybe the, the, the junkiest, most beat up vehicles possible because for a lot of times I can just make all the parts I need or scratch build stuff to make up for the parts that are lost. So, you know, almost, I rather just get shells to uh, right. make things work in my manner. Cause for the most part, if I buy a vehicle, I try to find, find one that's not complete anyways, because I feel that if something's complete, it shouldn't be touched with. That's my golden rule. If it's complete, it's left alone. Even like my crusader back here, if my crusader was complete, but I didn't modify it. It's completely stock other than a couple magnets on the bottom, which don't hurt the, hurt the model. But, you know, I didn't want to mess with it because it's original. It's complete. If it was missing a bunch of stuff and, you know, in, in bad shape, it's super yellow, sure, fair game. But, you know, you have kind of, you know, some set guidelines to kind of preserve the line. You know, you still, you still respect the toys and you don't want to go in and completely customize everything because, like I said before, customizing is a very niche uh, customer base. So if you ever come across a customer and you want to sell it it's very hard at least from mm. my personal experiences to sell vehicles figures must obviously be better for selling mainly for i think a price point plus the overall play as dis displayability to be able to put them up vehicles take up so much darn room i mean obviously my crusader launch pad is the size of a general which if anyone has a general i'm sure they do they know how large and just awkward it is you know you can't stick that everywhere so trying to get into trying to sell vehicles is, is rather hard uh you know especially if you like to do stuff a little bit out of the norm if you like to make stuff that look just like the factory stuff maybe but still it's it's kind of hard to you know justify getting into super expensive stuff if you ever wanted to get rid of it because <laughs> more often than not you're going to be stuck with it probably for forever but uh, you know uh, no, I'm just going to say, say I'm good, 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 good. good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was going to say just that I agree with him about if I have a complete, uh, Mike, if I was lucky enough to have a complete flag, like it would be foolish to customize it. I just, there are so few of them. <laughs> And, and I don't have that kind of money to throw around. It just doesn't make sense. There's plenty of broken ones or incomplete ones to customize. So same thing goes for figures. If I had a complete, beautiful Star Duster or Creed of Cobra, like why would I bother to customize that? Having said that, people who have them and want to, I, again, I can't fathom why you would, but if you do, whatever, it's your toys ultimately. So if you want to do that, go for it. I, just, I don't get it, but whatever. So that's what you just mentioned, the flag as well to talk about was that I think uh, Matt was the one that posted or I saw it somewhere on Facebook. It was the uh, it was a Tiger Force flag. Yeah. 
So, I mean, the box was customized as well as the flag itself. Now, it was in a G.I. Joe museum somewhere, I believe. But um, two years ago in 2016, when we were at a Joe Con, a guy had had a... Python? Uh, no, no, no. It was the uh, Night Force. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had it there for the um, custom contest. Mm -hmm. But once the custom contest had been judged, he slapped a sign on it for sale. Right. So he was trying to sell it. And you're right. You have to find that itch market. Who's willing to buy it? Because but he ended up taking it home. Yeah, because no one wanted it. Because that's right. No one probably would. now. If I had the money, I would buy a Tiger Force flag in a heartbeat. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't hesitate. Uh, get my notepad out. Note to self. That is a niche market. Paint it yellow. Sell the mic. For <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, uh, Forty Six Zone wants to know: When you guys paint match, do you find whatever color is closest? Or do you mix paints to match? Uh, that's a good question. Um, for my, for me, uh, I try to paint match as best I can, and I will mix paints. But when I mix paints, is only so much uh, shelf life for that paint. So right. if I've got some small parts to take care of, I want to take care of them quick. Um, other times, though, I kind of take that. I call it kind of the POC styling, like that pursuit of Cobra. Like you know, if I want to make it just my own take on the figure then I'm not afraid to use a different green or a, you know, slightly lighter or darker shade. Just go and do what I want, Matt. Right. Yeah. I would say, I, I can't say really, I would color match. Cause a lot of the stuff I do is so custom that it's either a different color completely or something that wouldn't have been the factory. I have tried figures before to kind of duplicate, say the colorways of a vintage figure. And I try to color match as best as possible. Yeah. But for the most part, my stuff is so custom that I usually have an idea of what I want it to look like in my head, different color, uh, different <clears> color <throat> patterns, and I'll just use those colors and try to find the best colors to match my customer to make it, you know, what I want it to be. So that's it. I don't really color match because my stuff so, you know, kind of, you know, out of the norm. I just have an idea in my head and a color uh, palette I want to use, and I just try to achieve that color. But it doesn't have to be <laughs> really a color match. It's, you know, completely random really um uh, bark and fridge wants to know how I, i'm not understanding this question unless i'm reading it wrong um how do you get bar cement off a surface you actually spilt some onto <laughs> can't hear that right that's for sure uh <laughs> how do you get barge b-a-r-g-e is he maybe he's pranking me <laughs> dude are you pranking me if it's like a if it's like a solvent cement, I mean, I guess you could probably try acetone, but I don't know what you know what that would do to the plastic trying to get it up. Yeah, I don't I don't got no cement on my toys, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. barge it says barge I, cement, B A R G E cement. Oh, that's a T at the end. Gotcha. I use a I use a, a, a cement. Oh. <laughs> this is this is the cement yeah, I use, plastic weld. It's actually like a solvent. It'll actually weld the plastic together. And I mean, it, it, once it dries, it is so strong that that part will actually will not break. It will break elsewhere. I've had models break and it wasn't where I actually glued the two pieces together. It was down the line of a weaker part of the plastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, but being a solvent like that, if you spill a little bit on a uh, area, I would try, you know, maybe a very small dab of acetone on like a Q-tip. Uh, just try to hit the area lightly and try to see if you can rub it out. But I don't know if that's going to deform the, the plastic, you know, if that will start eating into the plastic as well and make things worse. It's always, always the, the concern of me if I make a mistake. Usually Rub out the semen. Good, good. <laughs> usually with, with that, I don't call it an oops. So it's like, well, I guess I'm not going to make it clean. I'm going to make it dirty. And then I'll weather it up and cover up all the boo-boos that I did, all the paint spills and scratches and stuff I didn't mean to do. And I'll, you know, make it look dirty and war beaten. And it's like, ah, it's done. Fix it. Dirty. That's Excellent. There's no oops. It's always just a new direction. You know, I've had right. numerous customs where I'm in a, in a different, uh, you know, path thinking, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. You know, then option B happens. I didn't even think about it. I spilled paint on it and like, oh, my God, I ruined it. No, just change direction and go that way. And it's, you know, I've come out with some of the best customs from just accidents mid, midway through the project. Stuff that just completely ruined what I was originally trying to do. And I just changed my focus. And then 
by God, it became, it became better than I could have hoped, you know? So, you know, if you spill a little acetone on it, let's say kind of roll with it. Use that as like battle damage, you know? Make <laughs> yeah, it, there you go. Yeah. You know, drill a hole through it, put some paint around it, make it look like it's supposed to be there, you know? Make it look like a rough spot, you know? Change it up. But if it's a figure, then, you know, <laughs> that's going to be a little harder. I'm speaking mainly for beer, but. Too many innuendos here for me to comment. Next question. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go to screen share, and we'll uh, look at some of the pictures y'all sent in. Um, so you guys, on the bottom of the screen where, where you see my picture, yep, just yep. hit it, and the white box will go around it. And so when you all talk, it'll, it'll show the picture at all times. Okay. So. Oh, I love this view. I haven't seen this in a while, Mike. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I knew I'd get to it in a minute. All uh, right, so this here, uh, we'll do this one first. So you know, for everyone who is actually watching or watches early in the show, this is one of the exclusives for Joe Fest 2019, um, which is uh, June 21st, 22nd in Augusta, Georgia. Yes. Um, now, this here is one of the customs you were doing, and you said off air that there was only going to be 10 of these. Yeah, unfortunately, we, I tried to lobby. I, and I will say to all the fans, I lobbied for more. I really wanted to do initially at least 25. I knew these things would be popular, especially the manner we were going about them. You know, I wanted to make them as factory as possible. I wanted to make them nice. I wanted to make them, you know, something that everyone would be like, man, I need this in my collection. So I was like, we need to do more. But unfortunately, I was kind of overruled and we had to kind of meet. They're awesome, Matt. They are awesome. Let me ask you this, and I'm only asking this because of past con experiences, you know, mainly fun pub cons back with the special of bot con. Now, with them being very limited to 10, mm -hmm. is there going to be a ticket process? A Because we want to make sure that these get out to the fans and not the dealers, right? Right. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be fans first. They'd get for, and it's first come, first serve. So, but yeah, dealers would not be like, you know, early buy. Oh, hey, I'm going to buy all 10 of them. You know, it'd be. Right. We don't want one dealer to just be waiting at the table where they're at. And they're like, well, of course, I would assume that they're going to be limited to one per person. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, man. Watch so, out for the mustache and fake nose, man. Watch yeah. Out. And Watch the funny out. glasses. That's right. Well, so. What we're going to do, we're going to do these as a parachute drop style. <laughs> <laughs> and all, all the adults <laughs> running like bats out of hell. We're going to chuck these things off. Get your kids out of the way. <laughs> Short bus is coming through. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that but, so awesome. there will be a problem. What? what do you say? Sorry, what was that? What do you say? Well, I was waiting here. It's yours. There will be a process. Now, Yes. Yeah. Now you'll have to refresh my memory. Is there? I know there's more than one custom. What, was there six? Is that right? Or is there less than six? Uh, well, each vehicle comes with a figure, so it'd be you no. Know, uh, oh wow, I didn't know that. There's three three vehicles, three figures. Three vehicles. Freeman was supposed to be doing a big boa, but I'm not sure if that's still going through. There's been some changes. I know for sure the Night Howler with uh, the Nate Night Demon. Will be one the night fox, uh, or shadow. I'm sorry, shadow fox with. Uh, I can't think of what Jimmy's character's name is, and then there's the iron grenaders or grenadiers or however you say it, uh, basilisk, uh, snowcat. Those are the three and vehicles. Now, will all three of these be limited to ten each? Yeah, that was where it kind of came into you know the agreement. You know. I wanted more because I was able to acquire more wolves, but some of the other parties weren't able to acquire as many items or as many okay. other items. So that's why, you know, I didn't want to come out and come to the show and I have 25 of mine and then they only have 10 or five or whatever. And then he's like, what's, what's going on here? We have, you know, a, a first class show going on. I want to make sure everything is the same. So we yeah. settle at 10. So everyone gets the same amount. I know granted it's not the, the best numbers and, you know, I it's certainly – Apologize to everyone that comes out that won't get one. You know, I'm sure once the show is over with, we'll try to work on something and maybe get a second batch going because all the stuff is, say, in a sense, in a process that we can have more stuff made. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, we're starting from scratch again. Just have to, you know, rum it, rum it, uh, rummage up some wolves to do a Kickstarter to find all the all the <laughs> loose wolf shelves in the world so we can get some more to go. But go. let me, on this figure here, um, 
all the red parts on it. Is yeah. it? Are those casted parts? Yeah, they are. They are one hundred percent cast. I actually have some right here next to me. I'll show you guys. Yeah, they are. They are one hundred percent casted parts. I had that all done by uh, Silverback Enterprise, uh, which is uh, Scotty for or Scotty uh, Williams, I believe. I'm trying to think of his last name, but I had a brain fart at the second. But he did all these parts. Actually, casted from original wolf parts, and he did a he did a bang up job. You know, it didn't have a a pressure pot, so you know you do get some inconsistencies with them. I'm not going to you know BS everyone and say these are flawless. I mean, they are casted parts, so you will have little inconsistencies. You know, here and there, but we tried to do the best possible job we could with the means that we had. Uh, I think everyone will still be very satisfied with it. Uh, you know, as Fun Pub can constantly put out garbage after garbage, and people still rave and have a great time. I feel a, an independent person doing this out of his own pocket for the good of the community, just to help you know promote a show and you know just kind of you know extend something that was never released before to the to the world to the community. Maybe get some, you know, some leniencies, or I'll get, you know, crucified. We'll see, you know. <laughs> now, this vehicle here, oh, does, it come, does it come with the figure, or is that something separate, differently? No, it, it will come with the figure, and it will come with box art. We're, uh, oh wow, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to work on making it a little bit more official as far as uh, display way, but uh, we're gonna, you know, it'll come with a, you know, a print of the artwork. It'll come with a file card, the figure, and the vehicle. So we're and making package deal have y'all made a price point on that yet no we're still i mean we're we're trying to make it where it's reasonable enough that we feel like you guys are getting a good deal but not like scalping it's like oh these things are 500 dollars, you know first come first serve you know it's nothing like that we're like oh we we have something we have we, we know we can just put the screws there on and milk them for every cent it's nothing like that right. fair for everyone but still at the same time enough that you know, myself will, can make up for the cost of the molds, the wool, yeah. the paint, the stickers. I mean, because the stickers are all custom stickers made by Bad Mother. I had these all custom made, custom sheets for this show. They're all redone from original wolf sticker, recolored. So, I mean, there was some, you know, more work than just going to Toy Hacks and buying stickers. Just throwing some out can, you know, paint on it and paint stuff orange. But Bad Mother does it right. So that was a good call. Right. I want to make it look as real as fact as possible. You know, from, coming from Joe Cons, even though the pub or the pub, the, the club did. <laughs> that was drinking in the pub. <laughs> the what? The club that was drinking in the pub when they made their decisions. So you were right. right. You were right. Even, even though they, they made their fair share of mistakes and people were disappointed, the fit and finish of the show was always top notch. They presented the customs or the, I'm sorry, the, they presented the exclusives in a manner that was very professional. And you're like, man, these are sweet. I like these. You know, I got, you know, that one of those white conquests behind me for Battle Force that made no sense to have a conquest in Battle Force, but it was cool. And the way they presented it, I was like, man, I need to have it. That's awesome. You know, I wanted to kind of do the same thing, come off in a professional manner where these come off as being a collectible grade custom slash exclusive where people want them, where people are like, eh, yeah, it looks like it came from a someone's garage and it's, you know, it's okay. You know, I wanted to make, you know, do my homework and make it nice enough that people would enjoy it. So that's, that's kind of the, you know, my reasoning to go kind of to such extents to make it the way it is or way it shows up. All right. All right. So we're going to go on the next one here and this is a, uh, some more of your handiwork. So tell oh, us about yeah. this is what's behind you right now. Yeah. That's, that's that, that monstrosity over there. Um, basically what, it, what came about is uh, Joe Con not last year, but the year before last, I was, in there, I actually had the uh, abandoned Rolling Thunder uh, diorama uh, display, and it was, you know, I, I felt it was strong, but not. there was a lot of good competition there. I was a little worried that I didn't really stand a chance. Um, and Joe Botta had the uh, Terradrome monster set with the, the the bubble tanks and everything. Just yeah, like, he was like, yeah. "Man, that's it. That's what I need to do. I need to do." more like practical effects is that that's what it takes you know it's it's a step above it's not just good painting it's not good execution it's not good you know concept of, of something they never did it, it's the practical effects it's taking our childhood imaginations and putting it into a real physical sense where you can look at it like oh my god that's what i imagined doing with my territory in my backyard you know so i thought you know what would be cool i had a, a crusader just sitting on my shelf like man you know the defiant was cool the crusader was cool 
but what if you could make it look like it was launching? You know, what if you could make it like it was, you know, you're a kid and you're holding it and making the rocket sounds and it's spewing, spewing smoke everywhere. So I just kind of started doing some research and luckily I found a, a mini DJing fog machine that lit up orange and it spewed out uh, fog, which I happened to use for Halloween. That was my excuse for get, getting it. It was for decorations. Uh, and then basically just found bits and pieces of all kinds of stuff. Used a, a Toys R Us construction crane actually the same one that joe bada used i just cut mine up into various pieces uh tons and tons of styrene i mean god i spent so much darn money on styrene it's insane <laughs> you know but now, now i look back on like boy i could have probably done it a little cheaper but anyways um and, and just foam and just you know just using pictures all i did was i took pictures of the real nasa crawler and launch pad and hung them up on my wall and i just had piles and piles of styrene and just looked at the pictures grab my exacto knife, grab some sandpaper, do some measurements, and just slowly start building a building and just, you know, compiling until my uh, foam blocks looked similar to what the, the actual uh, crawler was. And, you know, long story short, took the Joe Con and fired up, made uh, Lanny uh, and everyone freak out that the uh, convention room was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> which it wasn't. It was merely props. Uh, but, you know, you know, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't win. I got, uh, I got third, which, you know, cool. I got, a, I got a win, but I was hoping a little bit, a little bit more. But the, the upside is uh, David Kunitz, who actually designed the Crusader and uh, the Defiant, and whose uh, wife's name is actually on the Crusader. That's actually the numbers. It's his wife's name backwards in, uh, on the stick, which I thought was kind of interesting. He, he was gracious enough to sign it for me. So I was uh, very humbled that a designer, the guy that actually designed that toy, in the 80s was honored enough to sign my project that i used his toilet so i you know i was like hey that's a that's an awesome win for me i you know i can't i've, I've reached the peak i can't get any higher than that that's that's the greatest honor to, to have a, an actual designer or someone that actually worked for the company you know like your stuff you know it should be the other way around like here this is my offering to you do you like it i think it's pretty cool oh my god that's it but for them to be like geeking out over your stuff that's you know come full circle so i know it's a uh, that's always something that we, we strive for and to actually have happen is just a, a mind-blowing experience. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I just have to say, too, I saw that in person. Uh, we, we turned it on. It was it was first class all the way. Totally sweet, <laughs> sweet. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Just wanted to make my childhood dream of launching a Crusader for everyone. <laughs> so everyone could have the same dream. We could all make the rocket sounds in our heads watching it blast off. <laughs> Yep, nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. Here's our next one, Matt. Of yours? Yeah, it was a uh, just a uh, what fang boat, uh, and this this was actually for GI Joe All Stars, the very first GI Joe All Stars with uh, Ice Cream Man. Yeah. Uh, from Pacific Customs. Um, he I was in that too. Asked me to, uh, uh, you know, do a custom. Like, oh, that's cool. You know, I've never done anything like this. But a group project with all these different great towns and customizers. Uh, and I had a fang boat. And I was like, man, you know what? It'd be cool to make it like a swamp, you know, like around, I was imagining like around Cobra Island, you know, in, in the swamps, like a patrol boat. And like, what can I do to make this thing neat? Uh, and basically just kind of just rummaged through my uh, uh, parts bit and just found, you know, I had a couple of those, uh, what are they, Cobra Combat Ninjas that had the little, these cool, super cool little rocket missile thingies that I was like, man, that'd be really cool to take over those little, uh, Guns have on the side. So, oh, yeah, I see now. Do some modification, make it, you know, a little different, but still not different enough that it takes away from the, the boat. So it just kind of adds a little bit more menace to it, but then just takes a new spin on. So it kind of, you know, just take a, an adaptation of uh, taking an already classic vehicle and just kind of, you know, putting my spin on it and making it a little bit more maybe aggressive or, you know, someone like, man, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. And then actually it happened to the next year for the second uh uh, G.I. Joe All-Stars, I built a hauling vehicle plus a trailer for that to go on to make it like a complete set, which you know, kind of spiraled out of control. But yeah, that was, was a super fun project. <laughs> cool. This is one of my favorites of yours so hmm. far. Oh, yes, the, uh, the, t the Tiger Snap, which stands for Super Noseball Artillery Platform, uh, is a, uh, a maggot that I took uh, and you know, wanted to do tire force with it. That was actually... Pretty challenging here, Paul. One second. Yeah, you know, I'm almost, I'm almost done, you know. I'll be up in a second. 
Shut your mouth, kids. Shut it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, that one, that was actually pretty challenging because I didn't realize the magnet was really three vehicles in one. I always thought it was just two. Uh, and when I realized that the top portion actual the cannon came off, I was like, oh, man, I got to figure out how to match these stripes up so they match from top to bottom. Plus, when you take them off, the stripes still work. So mm. it, was, it was a bit of a challenge. Plus, I never really could get the fade right. So instead of, like, always doing, like, the normal fade, I kind of would do, a like, a more of a crisp line break where it, it kind of works, but it definitely wasn't what I was hoping for. I like to really try to fade. And then, of course, unbeknownst to me, I wasn't thinking how the tongue goes on the Tiger Force stickers, but I actually did those on upside down. As you can see, the tongue is on the top portion, not the bottom. Oh, but okay. Lining them up for the portion, the size. Uh thinking that way but after i got done I'm like oh my god this are upside down <laughs> but, but but it's still got it's still got front page on his tank so it's like yeah maybe it's, it isn't you know as noticeable as i thought so oops <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. then there's another tiger force yeah that one's actually sitting behind me that was my second ever custom and i wanted to i love the version 5 hiss i mean that's absolutely my probably my favorite modern vehicle i have i've done i think six v5 hisses uh but you know tire force was always kind of my favorite sub uh <laughs> sub team. and uh <clears throat> i wanted to do that vehicle on a tire force and give it the proper yeah, treatment you have a clear window on that matt yeah yeah actually uh bring the actual one behind me that, that's actually what i hate about that his tank is that all black yeah. window that, that was the thing. I didn't like the, the cambia so cheap. So I took uh, plexiglass and cut it out with uh, a Dremel and then filed it. It took so long to file and sand it. I bet. Oh, wow. Right. So it looked uh, correct. And you know, straight. I don't want it to look chachi. So <laughs> doing it like, oh, like that was a big challenge. But it came out good. It looked, it looked good at the overall fit and finish where – kind of dressed it up and it made it seem a little more realistic. The, the closed canopy is just dumb. I don't, yes. I don't it, it looks really cheap. Uh, yeah. you know, the, the Cobra rat, I'm just thinking like, eh, whatever kids will play. With it. You know, do you uh, keep it displayed with this rock version or do you put the, uh, the newest tire force roadblock with it? No, I, I had that roadblock sitting around and that was actually my first figure I ever tried to customize. And uh, I just looked on, that was one of those that I actually looked for like color matching. I tried to find colors that were like the original Tiger Force Roadblock, and I tried to, you know, mimic those colorways on this figure and just paint it so it's as close as I could to the vintage. Just kind of, you know, kind of pay homage to the, that uh, figure and kind of give it, you know, a, more of a modern feel. And you know, hope I did it justice. You know, I was like tried by, you know, best to match the colors, but you know, it. Yeah, it looks good from here, man. Close, close enough. You know. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of your dioramas yes uh you know the funny thing about this is actually it was a joke on as well uh everyone hates the mole pod like despises it you know it's like <laughs> worse so i thought you know what i'm gonna do justice i'm gonna make the mole pod cool and how am i gonna do that so i took the mole pod and i weathered it and made it look like it's been burrowing through tons and tons of earth and dirt and you know under buildings and actually it's funny the building was supposed to be a different like two level building but my second wall came out so terrible with the bricks that I got so mad, I actually broke it in pieces out of frustration. <laughs> and then those pieces you see laying there, Madison, I'm, okay, Maddie, be right there. Uh, the pieces were actually parts of the building that I crushed that I actually just scattered around. And it looks like it's coming up out of a rubble building, which ended up being better. Once I said, you know, there's no, there's no mistakes. It's always just a new avenue. That was... A mistake, a fit of rage. I was like, I'm so tired of this. This is crap. I, you know, I have to start all over. And I was like, wait a second. This would actually look cooler. Like, threw it all down, glued it, I painted it up gray. You know, and the awesome. airbrush a little white. So, and it turned out better than I would have thought if I did it the, the way I was originally planning. So, isn't that so much fun when you like, you're sitting there going, how am I going to do this? And then you're sitting there with a bunch of scrap of something and you're like, oh, this will work perfectly for this. It's such a cool satisf satisfaction, I think. Yeah. Exactly. That's the action to go, oh, man, I created out of this stuff. It's ridiculous. Right, right. And then, you know, and then you look back, like, man, what was I thinking when I made that? That's like genius. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was, like I don't, how did I make this again? And, you know, but you're in this, it's like, your brain's firing. You're like, man, this is going to be perfect. And, you know, it all comes together. You're like, wow, that, that's exactly what I was, you know, trying that's to what I was going for. 
Well, you know that senior manager, uh, Joe Global, uh, you know, position is open, man. So, genius, step right up. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Let me go get my resume. <laughs> Starting at 23000 by the way. Oops, sorry. Okay, what do we got? Oh, yeah, here. This is uh... – oh, Man, this is one of my favorites. I was actually a commission for Ed Schumacher. He gave me a mauler and said he wanted a, you know, a Cobra – Mauler. I was like, all right. So I really had no idea that the club tried to make this a couple years back. <laughs> you know, I had no idea. I just, you know, tried. Made, you know, made this one. And, you know, man, I spent a lot of time dry brushing and oil rubbing and, you know, really detailing the heck out of it. And, man, actually, I'll tell you what, when it was done, it was really hard for me to send it back. I really just wanted to, like, pay him the money. <laughs> you know, Here's your money back. I mean, <laughs> oh, man, that, that was a fun project. That was a, that was a labor of love. And it was really, you know, one of those that you're like, man, why, you know, I need to make one for myself now, <laughs> but I haven't, you know, you know, I'm always yeah. sidetracked with eight million other things, but yeah, that was, that was a super fun project. And, you know, very happy that Ed has it and is enjoying it, but yeah, I was. You'd rather be enjoying it though. Uh, yeah. I'd rather it be on my shelf. That's all right. <laughs> I should have spent the money on pops already. So I, I get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, well, guys, I might have to hop off here. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to go over this last vehicle real quick? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go over that one real quick. Uh, that is my, actually, believe it or not, that was a Ninja Combat Cruiser from Retaliation. Oh, yeah. I cut the back off of it, took the rocket launcher off, made it a... Okay. Added headlights, taillights, uh, used wow. picture wire to make a winch, and added some Lego wheels. So, <laughs> you know, nice. Wow. I went all out on, you know, definitely... Just really tried to improve everything that I thought was dumb on the Ninja Combat Cruiser. And as you see, all the stuff that is dumb, I uh, took off because, <laughs> you know, it just, that vehicle had so much potential, but it just didn't thrill me. And I was like, yeah, I got to change this stuff around. And, you know, just simple things. It really wasn't a lot of work on that one to do, just changing up simple things. And it just made such a big improvement on it. But Matt, but, look, it's a green ninja. That's awesome. Yes. It right. actually reminds me of uh, Bulkhead from Transformers Prom. Yeah, I've actually I had people ask me if it's a Transformer crossover. Like, nah, it's just a Joe vehicle. You know. Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. If you gotta go, man, I understand. I appreciate yeah. you coming on and uh, helping out with your no, your I ideas. All, I got a pregnant wife. I got a ten to and got a kiddo that desires my uh, affection and attention. So I got to go up and do some. I want to see him again. We get it. It's been it's been a pleasure. You'll see me. On Facebook, very shortly. <laughs> if not, and if you don't, that means he got banned again. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, then look for Stuart Pedasso. He'll be on. There you go. Hey, All right, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you. All right. Uh, yeah, oh, he... we had one more. Oh, well. <laughs> this is the same uh, tank as that blue one, wasn't it? Uh, Yeah, it looks like it. He did Tiger Force on this one. I did, uh, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, okay. He had a couple more left. Oh, well. That's cool, though. Yeah, yeah he, I like his. He showed me. There was three Tiger Force. This is the third one. So, yeah. I thought they were really good and how he does his Tiger Force. He's been telling me he's selling that um that his tank one. So, I'm yeah. thinking about it. But we've got other things I got to do, too. I, I then, forgot he did that mole pod one. That was I. That is a fantastic scene. There's just so much going on in that diorama. I love it. And then I guess this is Pip Daddy Distro rocking it out with a bat. I guess. I don't know. I know he changed this to his uh, one of his pictures on uh, Facebook. So oh, yeah. I'll have to ask him about it. And then this is, but well, yeah, a few left. Okay. Let's see. That is a That's Rolling Thunder. Uh, yeah. Abandoned Rolling Thunder. Yeah. Uh, did he enter this in a custom yep. contest at Joe Con? Yes, he did. Yep. I remember seeing it now. Yeah. Wow, that is it's amazing the details he puts into it. Absolutely. Gosh, it's crazy. All right, now these are your figures. Uh, yep. So we'll just, I know you had quite a few, so we'll try to go through these as fast yeah. as we can. But just kind of, you know, name the figure off, which I can see is Quick Kick. Thank God it looks nothing like Lanny. <laughs> yeah, this is that Ryu figure that came out. Based, that's the base of it. And then okay. I just, you know, went to town and uh, just – just little things. Cut this, cut that, add this, and next thing you know, I've got a little belt for him. It looks pretty close to Quick Kick. So, yeah, had some fun with that one. Now, all these figures are still in your collection? 
Uh, I have to remember as I look at them, but just about all of them are. I've yeah, I, I've been asked to commission a few pieces. I just it's just not my thing. It takes me too long to work on these things. I feel like I have to charge way too much money, and I don't have a lot of time. So I, right. I try to do like one a month if I can. So I really do it for the purpose of adding to my collection. So now this one's recent, isn't it? Yeah, this is my most recent one. So if if anyone knows the character, it's cool. If anyone knows the character from the Marvel comic run, it was Ripcord's girlfriend. And she was this, dressed up in this balloon bear and a bit of a silly storyline. I kind of took the idea. And I, again, that POC thought was like, well, what if like 10 years down the road, she joined G.I. Joe. I mean, why not? Everyone else has joined G.I. Joe. So uh, she joined G.I. Joe. She somehow stays in bear costume. Like, that makes sense. Who cares? And uh, and then I had these balloons. I actually ordered uh, some new balloons from that 7-inch uh, uh, Stephen King kit character. Okay. Uh, anyway. So I'm going to replace those balloons pretty quick here. But, uh, yeah, I just had fun with the character. And that hat is kind of a throwback on the bottom to the hat that the character wore in the comics. Um, and it was made out of just rubbish, absolute rubbish. Um, a part of a lizard tail from that Spider-Man uh, lizard character and mm -hmm. uh, bottom canister of a Cobra Commander piece. So anyway, it's just kind of fun making stuff out of random pieces. Now, this one here is off the Fortnite figures, right? Yes. Yeah, it's the base. Yeah. I care less about Fortnite, not my generation, but my son was all about it. And when I saw those figures, I bought him a few for Christmas. And I was like, you know what? I could do something with this one. <laughs> a lot of people are because they fit so well with a three and three quarter scale line. Yeah, yeah. Hey, anything at this point, but anything in four inch is cool. Most of them are a bit too cartoonish for me to fit in my universe, and I realize it's a bit ironic for me to say the bear is somehow not too cartoonish. But again, whatever for the character, I had fun with it. All right now, here's your hollow point. So I take it you did not get the club hollow point. Actually. Actually, I did. Uh, I got it through my buddy and sight unseen. And then when I got it, I was like, I'm disappointed with it. And then, man, all right. So a side note, I totally got into the BTR built to rule line. I just just about completed it. I'm missing Flint and a, a missile from the Grizzly Patriot. But um, I'll, I used to hate that stuff. And then I, somehow I hate it so much, you know, I started to like it. So I got rid of Hollow Point, and then the stand came in, and I was like, you know – <laughs> what if I use real Lego pieces and glue it to his arm? And I just kind of, you know, you just try little dumb things. And it's meant to be actually a bit dumb, really, a bit silly. But I had fun with it. So it's just kind of my nod to BTR. So when you did, you made this figure because you had the stand? Uh, essentially, yeah. My buddy sent me the stand. I was like, all right, the replacement stand, right? Because the other ones are, you know, hollow points, some nonsense. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know what? And then I had a boss fight head and I had that hat and I was messing around with forever. I was like, it's got Joe like raised up on this hat. I didn't even know where the uh -huh. hat came from. No idea. And I'm like, I got some fun with this. So I did. Here we are. Hold on a second. Someone was asking a question. I need to see. We're going to ask if it's actually used on barges after the show. I don't know what he's talking. There's some of that glue cement still. All right, this one here is uh, this is one of the uh, dead shadows. The red shadows. Red yeah. shadows. Yeah, I'm sorry. Skeletron. So uh, I actually got this kid the last joke on um, Rage and Spoon. I think right. Yeah, he was selling the uh, the head and the torso, and then Boss Fight Studios had a skeleton. So I used the arms and legs, and then I I cut off the pieces you see on the arms and legs from. Um, I think a rise of Cobra, a rise of uh, Cobra, Cobra commander. Okay. And I just had some fun with it. Um, Justin thinks that the hat from hollow point was from a uh, rag and spoon. Yeah, it was definitely a cast. So I don't know if it's an original cast or if it's cast from a Joe figure. Cause it does say Joe. Maybe he knows uh, who was actually cast from. Cause I've got no idea. Okay. I'll keep it on that one. This is a ah, stretcher. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I had fun making this figure too, but the contraption, this is kind of like what Matt was talking about earlier, where you just you're sitting there pulling up scraps and you're like, what could I do with this? Wait a minute, could I actually it's a bit goofy, but you know what? What stretcher came with is a very goofy flotation device or whatever that he had. 
and I, I start piecing things together. You could probably clearly see that's an alley viper uh, shield, but yes. some other things. It was a stormtrooper backpack, and I, I don't know, all these different things I start putting on, and I'm like, oh, what the heck, man? I got this little sled here that would work perfectly. So, uh, and then I had a uh, uh, Avax Lab made the uh, the dead body in the body bag. <laughs> wow, so, yeah, kind of looks like Scarlet a bit. Sorry, Scarlet. <laughs> I love you, but Very anyway, cool. yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Now this one, I think I might work. Didn't you use this diorama in the Joe Con? I did. Yeah. I, I remember it. Upland. Kind of a funny story there. My wife was just, she's like, you know, it's a good thing. I love you. So I went out in the backyard. A silly story here too is I get out of school right in, in June and I got out. I think it was Thursday at noon. No, no, not Thursday. Wednesday at noon. And I knew to enter my custom, man, I had to be in there the next day. Or maybe it was Thursday at noon. Whatever it was. Your I wife told, entered before you, didn't she? Uh, that was a later one. That was a Disney, yeah. But the oh, next okay. But this one, I went in my backyard. I said, Jules, I just need to dig up a little plot of earth. I said, I'm going to dig this plot of earth. I put it in a big old bucket. She helped mm -hmm. me carry it to the back of the vehicle. I actually watered it on the trip straight to Colorado. I might, it was like 22 hours straight to Colorado. I'd worked all day long. And I'm like, let's go. I said noon. That's not true. It was like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And I drove and I got there the next day. It must have been Friday at noon. Whatever it was, I had just enough time to enter uh, my customs. I yeah, I, I was actually the guy who was checking in customs. And All right. I remember you got there at literally the breaking point, <laughs> and y'all yeah. were just, and you brought that dirt up. And I, I looked over at Chris and I'm like, uh, Is that dirt? Did he bring <laughs> real dirt and grass? And you're like, Yeah, I brought it all the way from home. I'm like, Shit. <laughs> Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, man, that was my that was my deal. I don't know to tell you, but uh, it was I hilarious. remember you had set it all up because we were in a hurry to get you out of there because you were you're right there at the breaking time. And I remember um you put it all up and then Kristen went over there. Look, you left and was looking at it. Yeah. And I I what I don't remember which one it was. I think it was uh the, the one on the snake eyes one. Right. He uh, fell over oh. and Kristen looked at me, she's like, I didn't touch it. <laughs> and so uh, I like I picked it up, but we got to stay in when we left here. We're done. We're out of here. Let's get out of here. There you go. There you go. But yeah, I remember seeing this one. I mean, that was a real good one you did. Yeah, I, I remember stopping at a gas station and having to get out and water it. My wife's oh, like, man. really? Yeah, unbelievable. All right. So we got Dawn here, right? You got the female snake eyes. Um, What'd you make this out of? Uh okay. So that was a, a that was a boss fight studio base. Uh, I think actually uh a nude figure, I think, paint her up. And I, I made the web gear out of just various pieces. And um, and then the head, the head was half of a, of a superhero. I'm totally not into superheroes. Um, Captain's, Captain Britain, I think. I just asked recently. Anyways, the bottom half, I think it was Captain Britain. And uh, the upper half were just the snake eyes. And I cut them and just kind of worked them so they would fit together pretty well. Wow. And then add a boss fight, uh, the hair plug in the back, which you can't see that well in this pic. But, um, yeah, I got it together. And then I actually posed her um, after the comic cover. One of the recent comic covers is shows her just like this. Like, okay. right, so, anyways, yeah, That's there she cool. is. I like that. <laughs> All right. Now, this is the Worms Officer. I'm assuming you didn't care for the club one, or is. Yeah. yeah you know. I, I, it's a guard, isn't it? What's that? This is a uh, a guard, IG guard. Um, it's actually the Destro. Well, I want to say it's Resolute Destro, maybe. Oh, okay. And that was the chest that had that strap and the um. I see the strap. Okay. Yeah, so I had that in my fodder. Uh, same with the upper arms and add fiftieth uh, Cobra Commander. Um, gloves and whatnot and anyways put it together so he's a lot leaner and meaner than the club version the club version was okay but i couldn't get my hands on one for cheap and i had these pieces sitting around before the club even came out with it and i'm like you know what i'm doing it and so I'm basically happy. yours is the, uh, the 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 fit one and the clubs versions like the uh senior <laughs> citizen that needs to retire <laughs> yeah exactly yeah passing the baton to mine i suppose yeah <laughs> <laughs> it looks really good i like that one yeah thanks man <laughs> All right. So the question is, have you seen um, Robot Chicken? 
Oh yeah, I've watched oh, Robot Chicken. Oh. I don't. All right, so there's, <laughs> there's this Robot Chicken ver, uh, show, and if you look at the stand, you could see it was called a giant hand. You have to Google it sometime. It's the one where the Joes are sitting there, and Duke's giving a speech, and he sees Roadblock with like white arms and snake eyes, and sitting there all painted up like some kid, and that's what the, the premise is. Some kid tried to paint him up like Spider Man, all sloppy, and then threw him into the grass. <laughs> and, he had, and he had grass stuck to him. So I tried to paint him up with the same messed up eyes exactly as the frame allowed me to do. So, uh, yeah, the episode's hilarious. At the end of the episode, like, you see the kid, and he's, like, grinding Joe's, like, on his bike. You know, like, we, we, we pretend to be making ice cream with bikes as a kid upside down. Right. He's grinding to Joe. And I, the Joe's, like, uh, shoot him in the back with uh, the mauler. And they're like, yo, Joe, like, wait a minute, we just shoot a kid? <laughs> <laughs> But I had to make that snake eyes just for uh, you know grins, giggles, and grins. Yeah, I got you, man. Yep. Now I did remember seeing this one. This one here looks pretty similar to the club version, except for the head and the hat, of course. But it, it's is similar. there a bigger difference? There, there are some subtle differences for sure. The uh, I actually had the because I did order that FSS. I had that keel haul, but to me the arms were like monkey length, and I just didn't like his build, so I sold them off. And then I thought, you know, I'll make one down the road. And then the pieces just kind of fell together. It, so the arms are shorter, more appropriate. Uh, I think they're different legs. So it looks very similar, but it, yet I think I think every single piece is different, actually, to tell you the truth. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, hey, look at this. This is our Space Force guy for uh, our new Space Force system, right? Yeah, it could be, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the Super Trooper, which is, I mean, I don't know. Like I said before, if, if Super Trooper can join G.I. Joe in the most ridiculous outfit to draw your attention, then I guess Bongo the Bloom Bear can join. So uh, <laughs> so I'm not the first guy to do this. I think uh, Trier, Marauder, Rubin actually did it with uh, um, with their uh, their line, right? Awesome MTF figures. And he used their chrome parts, but I kind of used the chrome pen that people were getting into. So okay. I used the chrome pen in a lot of those parts. Uh, Ian does a fantastic job with uh, – he sprays on the uh, chrome and his paints now, so he's really taken up a notch. But uh, that was my attempt at Super Trooper, just outlandish. That's pretty cool. All right, so all of my customizing figures are all modern except for two. I think I showed you the O-Ring one coming up as well, I think. But uh, this is my only new sculpt uh, custom that I did because in my collection, I have all the OG-13 original 83 swivel figures. Plus, um, I can't remember who did one now, but he did an O-Ring uh, shooter. So I have that. And then I have the OG, if you will, 14 new sculpt. Um, all of them, except I had to customize shooter here. So that's what I did. And then I got the modern OG 14, which I had to uh, also customize the shooter for that too. So this is the new sculpt shooter. Uh, once again, I keep repeating myself, but just, uh, had some fun trying some things out. It's, uh, it was the female doc from that line. Okay. So it's basically the same figure, just painted green where the other, the modern one was brown, wasn't it? Yeah. Brown. Exactly. And then I added the web gear over the top. Gotcha. Yep. All right, so Larry Ham Larry Ham has done the uh, the recent uh, Marvel run comics, and this is about when he picked up. He started at one fifty five and a half, and I think it was around the one sixties. He introduced a couple new Russians. I can't pronounce his name. I don't know Colonel Chikatilo. Who knows Chicklets? Colonel Chicklets here, and uh, <laughs> this is mostly uh, a Marvel figure uh, Red Skull, I think base. Serpentor head, a casted uh, Russian hat, and then I made the cigar out of just just ridiculous. I don't even know. It was like a little. Uh, oh, I know. My gosh, that might have been a low light, a uh, little bullet, which sounds ridiculous to have used that now. But I just painted it a little bit, little orange on the end, little yellow, a little red, and boom, it was perfect cigar. So, yep. And I think here's another, another one. one. Yep, another one of those figures, just a light camo. Can't see it in, the thick, in the, this one all that well. And made a, a I think uh, Marauder Task Force, they usually send you like an extra item. Can't remember if it was MTF or not, or if it was AVAC. But anyways, I did it was bottle. I'm like, oh, turn to a vodka bottle, just like in that pick, in the little pick if you see. I, yeah, I, see that you had the picture to it? Yeah, just kind of give it a nod to where the homage is coming from. 
He's eating a raw onion too. He should have come up with a raw onion, but oh. no dice. All right, those are these dreaded blue ninjas. Not a green ninja, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> how many yeah. green ninjas do you have? <laughs> exactly. So this is the uh, the blue ninjas, the revenge ninjas, and when that head came with the um, uh, retaliation shock trooper, I was like, I think that was kind of a nod uh, to these characters, kind of thrown in the package. So I'm like, I got to use this. And so once again, I got the homage shot there from the comic. So you kind of a feel of where I got it from, what I was going from. So, gotcha. and I used that, uh, his weapon there that came from, um, Oh, like, uh, it was a Thor. Uh, I think it was a Thor enemy. I don't know. You probably would know who it is, but, I don't know. Anyways, he had this big, long weapon. I was like, all right, I'll, the best I could do, duplicate it. Wow, that's a great duplication of the picture. <laughs> Try. This is your other O-ring one? Yeah, this, that's my only like vintage O-ring. It's actually my second custom I ever did. I uh, So I'm like, i got to make a soft mastery, but how am I going to make him chubby? And it just well, those parts didn't exist then. They may now through Angel Forge. I'm not sure, but I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a uh, um, – road pig base so i took the road big road pig uh head at least i can't remember if i used his torso or not but took his head and i sat there and i just sanded it down sanded it down that flat top it's kind of funny because my son and i got into customizing together at first and he's sitting there with his road pig he's sitting there grinding on the sidewalk because he doesn't have any patience you know he's grinding away grinding away i'm like man what's wrong with you you gotta go slow roll man and he just about put a hole right right through the head but uh oh wow it actually looks pretty good anyway, so cool. But, yeah, I ground it down and kind of paint them bald and uh, and then put on a modern vest. And there's the stuff. Yeah. Um, Chris Rook says that that uh, piece from that last image. Which one? That you said the Marvel figure item. Okay. He said that came from uh, Iron Man 2's Whiplash. Uh, yep. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Iron Man. Okay, yeah. Whiplash is that figure, yeah. Yeah, I do not know my Marvel superheroes, so – Ooh, I like this one. Yeah, Commander Creek. So, ironically, I never got a chance to read this run. Uh, I'd love to. Costa's run, I think, the Cobra run. And uh, I was aware of it, that Chuckles is the main feature. And I was aware they had this competition amongst the Cobra characters and this new character, Crake. And we're all trying to like um, add up the body counts, right, to see who'd become the new commander. So, uh, got the head cast and just kind of put it together and – and I, I, I took a cape and I modded a piece so it kind of went around his neck. And uh, yeah. Cool. So, I actually like that one. I mean, even if you didn't call it Craig, I mean, it still makes a badass uh, Cobra Commander. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. But yeah, those, those are little fangs there kind of set them apart as that, as that right. Craig figure. Yeah. All right. So this is a completely unique figure. I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. Uh, Matthew mentioned that he was part of All Stars at uh, Ice Cream Man. Uh, Jeffrey yeah. he put together, and he had invited me to. This might actually be the second one, though. I think it was called GI Joe Reloaded. Um, I did something for the first; I can't remember, but this is the second one, I think. Anyways, I made this figure. If you look there at the uh, shoutouts in the picture, you can see it's supposed to be a navy uh, brown shirt. Basically, they're the guys on the uh, on the deck of the carriers. And they would use those, as I understand, they'd use those chains and grappling hooks to kind of secure the jets. Right. So when the carrier's in the storm, you know, they're not losing the jets off the side, right? Exactly. So uh, I was like, I really want to make this figure. What can I do? And it got inspired by uh, Shipwreck came with uh, the hooks. And then I, I, I took the hooks apart and put them together. And then I had leftover like jewelry, like some chain, some cheap jewelry chain. And so I made the pieces, so they they hang over his back, and they're on his back as well. And I got a headset from the Eagle Hawk, um, and uh, just made a background, uh, kind of alluded to uh, Japanese Americans who served during World War II. Uh, just a cool story if you don't know about them, the hundredth and the four forty second RCT. But it, anyways, uh, yeah, kind of did a little background bio that kind of said he was the uh, grandson of one of those heroes. So. Yeah. Um, uh, 46 Zone had a question. How do you prevent paint rubs when painting across joints? And, of course, Matt replied back real quick saying Dremel. Is that about right? Yeah. Some people Dremel. 
Uh, myself, I'd rather go with a smoother look because a few of mine I did try to dremel and it just got a little too chunky on the uh, on the um, um, joints. So here's what I do. And I forget who shared this tip with me, but I sand down the joints. And then what I do is I take um, nail polish remover mm -hmm. and I take a Q-tip and I dab nail polish remover over those sanded joints, let it dry real quick. And then I paint over those. Let it dry, move them, the joints slightly, paint again if I have to. And that, that takes up like 90, 95% of the problem of the joints chip and paint. Okay. Uh, every now and then I forget. In some of my early customs, I move them, pose them how I wanted to, and then I, I'd sit there and paint over the joints that were screwed up. And then it's I may almost become a statue at that point. But, you know, I don't play with my toys. I, I'm no right. dark helmet. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I just set my figures up and boom, they're good to go. Uh, um, same way. Yep. Hey. hey, now this one I actually got a first place at JoeCon for. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is Dana from uh, October Guard, but it's the cartoon version. Plus, in the upper right hand corner, I would give the credit. I can't even see, but I give credit to whoever drew this if I could. Just a beautiful version of her, and I, it kind of inspired me to make her. So it's a Data Viper body. I think. I think uh, pretty much. All of it except for the head and hat, I think. Might be different legs. I can't remember now. But anyways, uh, paint up that pink. And that's where I actually matched paints and did mix uh, some red and white until I got that pink where I was pretty happy with it. It doesn't match perfectly, as you can see, but it was my best attempt. Uh, painted some white striping freehand. And uh, I took the head from – there's another Marvel Universe figure. Kind of cut down the elf ears a little bit. Add a hat and boom, there you go. Cool. All right, so here's uh, Budo, just my take on Budo. Um, Man, the club should have got you to do their Budo. <laughs> yeah, I kind of made him almost like he was almost like in a classier, uh, almost like a fancy uniform version of armor. I even decided to let the uh, – I, I tend to, when my, I'm done my customizing, I tend to use a, 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 a dull matte spray coat kind of keep the shine down mm -hmm. I tried not to in this one just to kind of let that armor shine a little bit so i'm almost like he was a uh, uh, not exactly dressed blues but that kind of a presentation uh with this guy so and that was another marvel universe head that most people i think are familiar with but i just loved it uh for budo so it looks really good yeah. I mean, i'm not a ninja guy by any means but that's a really good looking one he's a samurai man not a ninja <laughs> oh hey, what is this? Uh, uh, Harrison Ford. This is uh, Indiana yeah. Jones. No, no, man. This no, is no. actually it is. It, it's Rakanda with a not to Indiana Jones, intentionally so. Okay. And like, uh, what would Rakanda do? Rakanda do if he's not a, uh, you know, what was it? The Tukaros or whoever he was with in the comics. It's like you know, if he was left to his own devices, uh, what would he do? Right. I kind of figured he'd do the Indiana Jones thing. So, yeah, it's a Lego Indiana Jones piece uh, that he's holding up. <laughs> And uh, and I just kind of put some stuff around him that accessories that would suggest he was you know the jungle guy he is, and the mustache was fun. I used uh, uh, let's see retaliation firefly head there, painted up brown, and I just really patiently actually I used a cheap acrylic paint mustache. I used a cheap paint because then I could when I made a mistake it dried fast. I could easily carve it away with my exacto blade to kind of form it into that crazy handlebar mustache he's sporting. So right, okay, yeah. like that. <laughs> All right, so Phoenix Customs, uh, people might know Aaron Buck or Oreo Builder. They do some fantastic projects, and I was. Honored, uh, they asked me to join one of their projects a handful of years ago. So um, I decided to make a, a, a desert viper. And if you look closely at the camo, it's different colored intentionally so, but I, I tried to make it like the 90s uh, desert chocolate chip camo. <laughs> I, I served in the Air Force in the early 90s, and I never did. I went over Iraq. My wife was like, no, I don't need you going over there. But if we had, we would have gotten the desert camos and there would have been uh, chocolate chips. So I always wanted chocolate them. chip. That's interesting. I always wanted them. That's what they called them because it was little specks, right? Right. But anyway, so I, I paint them up little white dabs and then I use like a, a very thin permanent marker to kind of outline them and then added my gray and blue colors. So just a nod to that era. But uh, obviously it's a Cobra figure. So uh, right. 
Yep. Okay. Enjoy, really enjoyed making the camo there. Now I like this one because he has the boom box. <laughs> All right. I'm even sporting the shirt here and support a word burglar, man. I, I, I love uh, I love Sean's work. Uh, his rap music is just fantastic. I can go off and off about that. But when I heard that music, I was getting ready to laugh, and then I just couldn't believe how talented the dude was, and his regular stuff is amazing too. So I actually made him one. So you asked if I still have these in my collection. This one I do, but I did make a second one to give to him. Oh, just cool. as a gift. I just I gave it to him actually at Loveland, Colorado, when he showed up there. And uh, he was blown away. But I made a Rap Viper. If you've ever seen his video, if you haven't, you got to see a Rap Viper video. It's sweet. But the figure's based off of him in the very beginning because he had his mouth covered up just like this. And gotcha. the story, my little story of the boombox, because obviously it's a it's an Autobot symbol. The idea here is that that's Blaster um, kind of masquerading undercover as a Cobra boombox, um, as if he's kind of you know listening in on, on what's going on and, and giving the intel to the, uh, the Autobots, right? But he's even got a Rap Viper tape deck, and that tape deck was taken – it was cast, but it was uh, cast from the um, – uh, you know this, the Transformers crossover. Uh -huh. uh, J uh, Diggle Jones and uh, Ninja Force Scarlet. You know what? Actually, it's, it's in that same one. Too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's it was, in the SDCC one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was originally used before for the Snake Eyes Transformer crossover figure. Right. But you're right. It's in that too. Yep. Oh, that was an all-star one too. All right. So uh, you were showing the the six. Right, so I, that my that Vietnam era, the uh, Lerp Squad six figures are just my favorite, favorite, favorite. And I could have shown you so much more picks, but you've only got so much time here. This is just I, I got this one, Storm Shadow coming up. I had so much fun making the Snake Eyes here. Uh, I even I in her in his hat is the actual picture from the comic of his sister. Somehow I blew the picture down. I thought I would lose all the detail, but I didn't. So oh, I wow. cut it down to that size, and I cut it just to make it fit in his hat. And uh, just like that, so uh, just a, just a labor of love with those guys, right? Same ones, yeah. So now the other ones, they had more detailed on their legs and everything, didn't they? Uh, I mean, the other of the six figures I made, or white Yes. Yeah. the uh, ones that was in the diorama with the dirt. Were these the same figures from it, or these? Some of them were were pretty plain. I tried to. Uh, they're actually, it's um, gosh. It was the Snake Eyes declassified issue. That was uh, was it Jerwa, that maybe that made that issue that, that series of comics. Fantastic. He took Larry's base and it took the story further. It had Snake Eyes talking like before he got injured, and I actually loved it. I hope the new movie goes okay. in direction like that. But um, I really I modeled it as much as I could, as close as I could to his art of the six figures. So if you're looking plain, it's because it looked plain in the photo. But that's a that's a <laughs> total rat. A Resol is Reslo Renegades? Gosh, what is it? I think it's a Renegades. All right, Tunnel Rat. Yeah, hat. I don't think it's Reslo. Okay, I, I always forget which one it is, but uh, the cartoon version, basically, of that Tunnel Rat. So use his head and uh, and then just debris to uh, make his little uh, towel around his head and uh, around his neck. and Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if you recognize this guy, Captain Min. No, I don't. No. All right. So I, comics, the comics totally influenced me as a kid, man. I, I had a friend across the street and he let me read them and I had that friend that let me read his comics. I would have never known about this world, but this is a guy who just like a random guy that uh, one of the Fred uh, Crimson Guardsmen knocks off Cobra Commander of the comic, dresses up as Cobra Commander. That was the introduction of the new Cobra Commander battle suit, that silver one. Right. And I get the boat ride over to Cobra Island from this, from this, loser guy essentially because he ends up jetting off the ship. The Fred guy is Cobra commander goes to Cobra Island and he lets the ship get blown up as his captain min figure. Well, his captain min guy ends up adrift on Cobra Island living off the Island and is secretly plotting against Fred. Who's just Cobra commander the whole time on the Island. Pretty, pretty funny little sub story, but um, yeah, I made that figure from scratch, just 3d uh, base head. I'm not one much for doing eyes when I can, I avoid it. But that was right. eyes from scratch. I was pretty proud of that. This one here, go ahead and talk about. I'm going to step away just for a second, okay? Yep, sure. There you go. All right. Uh, all right, not, not too much to say. This one. Uh, just a Duke. I know all of us pine for a, uh, a 50th anniversary and upgraded Duke because that first one was just terrible with the uh, slit wrist arms. So uh, 
yeah, just I can't even stand to have in my collection. So I know I needed to make a, a 50th anniversary, but a classic throwback to Duke if I could. So I don't know if I can remember all the parts used here. <laughs> That's not my dog. Mike must be feeding his dog. Or his dog's laughing at him because he's going to the bathroom and, well, the dog sees what he sees. I don't know. But that's either here or there. Actually, it's there, not here. All right, so anyways, yeah, it's Duke, uh, Marauder Task Force head. And, uh, yeah, had a lot of fun of it. I'll, uh, I guess while Mike's gone, I'll give you a little background yeah. for myself. I uh, I know he's going to ask me why uh, why I customized. So I was a kid. I kind of had some anger issues as a kid. And I think, I think my parents thought, you know what? This kid needs a project. This kid needs a hobby that he can sink his teeth into. So my uncle made a lot of NASCAR die casts, a lot of cars, uh, added spark plugs. I was always enamored with those. And so, uh, yeah, my parents, I was in NASCAR too. So my parents got me car kits and uh, race car kits. And I sat there and I sanded the tires down and um, painted the raised Goodyear letter on the tires and uh, really kind of got my, I worked on my patience as a kid. And uh, I got back into joke collecting in 2007 and 2008. My son and I uh, decided, I think we saw some customs online and we decided to get into customizing figures and uh, you back, Mike. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry. I had to use your extra really quick. I was, uh, I think your dog was laughing at you too, for some reason. No, we got two black <laughs> labs. One's like, he's fixing to be a year old All right. and the other one's she's 12. No, 10, All right. 10. And she, she don't like him too much. He likes to run around the house like a bad hell, and he gets in her face, and she starts yapping at him. So I'm just I was telling them about uh telling the audience about uh, my background a little bit. I started oh. making uh, NASCAR model kits when I was a kid. Kind of some anger issues, and I think that kind of helped me build some patience. I'd sand down the tires to make them race used, all that kind of stuff. And uh -huh. uh, and then I got a model kits as a kid. I was probably done by 13, and um. My son and I, when we got back into collecting Joe in 2008, I think I misspoke, but earlier, but 2009, we must have seen customs online. And my son and I both attempted to make a snake eyes together, uh, just an in, uh, in obscure version from the comics. And we both worked on it together and just had so much fun doing that, that I got mm -hmm. started getting customs and went from there. So Anyways, this is an old snake. This is another example, Mike. You were talking earlier about, you know, do I modify the club figures or what do I do? And for the most part, I don't modify the club figures. If, if I don't like them or I think I can make one better than I do. So that's what I did here. I had this jacket from another Marvel figure, I think, and uh, was just like, hey, I can do this. The, uh, the, neck, the neck piece is actually uh, the Hard Master's headband. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like I said, things come kind of come together, you know, and it's like, all right. All right. All right. You probably saw this one at Jokon too. I think I've ever seen it. Yep. I uh it's another Red Shadows figure, the Kraken. This is this most of this figure here is uh that Marvel figure again, another Spider-Man lizard guy. And I cut off his tail and modded it and put it to the back of his head to give him uh the extension on the head, just like the original figure. Um Took the net off of the uh, Shadow Tracker figure. Took the uh, the little harpoon deal from uh, one of the club's uh, Iron Grenadier figures, and voila. Which place did you get on this one? Uh, you know what? This one actually didn't place, but I the other my other figure did. I uh, I did the uh, I think it's coming up here. I got the Snake Eyes. It was the prototype from 1995. You'll eventually see it. So this is uh, Create a Cobra that super rare elusive figure in the O-ring that goes for hundreds of dollars. And uh, I was like, Oh, I think I can make one. <laughs> like, I don't need an O-ring. I'll do a, <laughs> a modern one. I still like the O-ring figure, but I'm not paying hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I don't blame you at all. <laughs> all right. So I made this before the club came out with their figure. I was actually going to enter this one at the joke con. Um, uh, Frankenstein costume or custom uh, contest. And uh, so I made this one out of the backpack with some star Wars pieces or whatever. And I, I really worked to mod the helmet, it just add little pieces, glue pieces on and that breather piece on his chest. Again, trying to make mm -hmm. vintage. That's actually an eel uh, breather hose, I think. And uh, yep. Yeah. So I had fun making this and then the club came out and I'm like, Oh man, I can't take this to the contest. The club does. Let's face it. And I love, 
I love what the club did. I really do. I appreciate them. I don't give them too much grief, but I know they don't like to be upstaged. So there's no oh, way. Oh yeah. <laughs> here's what, here's what I'm missing. I don't want to say mine's all that, but uh, I felt pretty good about it. And I, 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 I knew they weren't going to like it. <laughs> now I've never seen this one, the club. Oh, the uh, Joe Con. Yeah, that was uh, that was my Colorado entry. I didn't get yeah. any love there, but uh, I just had some fun. Like you know, and it's a little redundant. Some pointed out, and they're right. He's got his straps on, but it looks like he's got his straps. Um, like kind of like, why does he have straps on? I don't know. I just was having fun with it. And I thought it kind of looked like a half undressed, like he's getting his gear off after a hard day at work. You know? <laughs> right. I see what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. So I just had him holding his helmet. There. Yeah. So, again, just my take on it. This here is my favorite one you did. <laughs> so this I saw cool. this one in, and I like, oh my god! Yeah, I got I got a second in that contest for that. So what people probably can't see in this photo, but if you saw it in person, it's actually got flocked hair. So, um, um, anyways, I uh, I took a boss fight glow in the dark figure, so it does glow in the dike. A uh, dark, not dike. Uh, dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Skeletons okay. in the closet. No, no, no. So, uh, anyways, this figure does go in the dark. It's 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 based off of um, Doctor Isotope from the club. Right. So Lanny made that, and I thought, all right, now what the club does like is when you give nods to what they've created. So I, I ain't gonna lie, I, I entered something I thought had a good chance of catching the eye of the judge, and it did. But uh, this is a glow in the dark uh, boss fight figure, and I painted on the um, the shirt and the pants. Okay. I look, it looks pretty good, I think, um, in oh, person. Yeah, I mean, like I was worried about it. it wouldn't look, it wouldn't look like clothes, but not. Nah, it, it really does come off pretty good. And then I cut off. Uh, I actually cut off uh, boots from another, you know, fiftieth Cobra Soldier Trooper, and and glued them on instead of the feet that were there. And the flocked hair was fun, man. I that was me just stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm like, how can I do this? So I got some cheap flocking stuff online seriously i probably paid 10 bucks total for this flocking and this little plastic tube to kind of squeeze it onto the head um and i, I put like a little bit of glue on the head and i just whoosh, squeeze this flocking onto the head and it shot right on there because i was worried about like I, I can't just drop this hair onto the head that's gonna look lame but i shot on there and it, it stood up like in the right way and i'm like oh man i can't believe i did this so yeah, I remember seeing this one. And I was like, man, that is. You know, I mean, I was really good. I like that one. And then behind it, actually, if you look at the deal there, I actually created that deal too. Um, just out of some extra, I don't have a teardrum, uh, but I just had some loose pieces laying around. And then I made a, I think it was a 50th Rock Cobra Commander that, like, it's supposed to be like the brainwave scanner behind him. So, yeah. All right, so this is uh, Snake Eyes returning home from Vietnam when he finds out his family was killed. Uh, he's got his head bandaged up. And uh, that duffel bag he's carrying is actually from the Walking Dead Carl figure. Oh, uh, okay. a little steal for my son. <laughs> he was cool with it. <laughs> or will be cool with it. I don't know. All right, that was that uh, prototype Snake Eyes figure that I was telling you about. Oh, uh, it slipped in my mind what this line was called. But they made a few of these figures where it's like the aliens were jumping out of the chest. Uh-huh. Uh, there, there was the next line they were going to do in 1995 when it got canceled. And admittedly, it's pretty lame and goofy idea. Like, why does Snake Eyes, who's the baddest ninja on the planet, need an alien to jump out of his chest and do his fighting for him? Oh, right. But I, I made that I made that uh the alien out of just it was a it was a boss fight like head covering that gave me like the lower jaw and the upper jaw then it was like a ben 10 figure that had this just this this rubbery blubbery gut stuff and i just wrapped it on there and took little tiny nails and the tentacles are from oh it was um oh i don't remember now that's right but that's a lot we've shown you. It's, it's probably not even nowhere near what you have in your collection, right? Yeah, that's probably a third or fourth of the customs I've done. But, uh, yeah. Right. So, if I now, can... Go ahead. Now all you have to do is hit the little square down your computer. Oh, all right. White boxes, and they'll take you off of me. 
All right, click on me or click on just the screen? No, just click on the white bar and it should disappear. The white bar. Like when you clicked on my picture, okay. it should put a white bar around it, like a square around it. Okay. And you click on it again, it should go away. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so uh, I guess if I were to give any advice for people getting into customizing, to me, the key thing is acrylic paints. Some people try to use enamel paints, and it's just not a good deal. Enamel never dries. Uh, it, it always remains tacky. Right. I'm pretty disappointed with that. But uh, acrylic paints, you could try with the cheap paints from Michaels to start with if you wanted to. But uh, I suggest using like a Model Masters uh, Testers paints or some other people use Tamiya if I'm pronouncing it right, or, but acrylic is the key. And then brushes, man, you can use cheap brushes. You don't want the brush head to be like uh, plasticky, but just some cheap brushes I get from Michaels. And uh, other than that, I recommend getting involved with a fodder box. Uh, you just get into the community and you'll find people that are passing a fodder box around and then you put in you know, gear, heads, arms, legs, and you pull out what you need. And the community is pretty good for that. I got to give props to a uh, Marine 73 or Chad Merrick. Some people might know him as he, uh, he actually started me off. He actually said, I'm done with all these parts. And he gave me a small fodder box to start with. Uh -huh. and I, I've just used that since man, used pieces and traded pieces and been able to build figures. Cause it gets expensive. Oh, that does. Some of the pieces I've used. I'm not paying 30, $40 for a torso, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. I don't blame you. Um, quick question. Uh, yeah. if if anybody wanted to start customizing, are, are there some Facebook groups they can go on since Facebook's usually the thing in days now? Um, that's or they need to hit hiss. Maybe there's some groups on hiss. You know what? Yeah, I, I tend to I tend to work uh, I tend to work still network through his tank quite a bit. OG thirteen was my home for sure, but um, not as many customizers on there as much anymore. Uh, Facebook is still good for sure. Uh, I'm just I'm. Off the top of my head, I know that I can come up with. Uh, maybe I'll think of it. Oh, uh, keep it, keep it a hundred. Keep, keep it a hundred. It's a good Facebook group for customizing. Um, I'll probably think of some others as I'm going here. But uh, yeah, to me, just advice is get into the community and start talking to people. And hey, how'd you do that? And and, and what's your advice? And people are usually pretty cool about sharing things. That's cool. Well, um, I want to dip into a couple other things real quick while we're sure. still live. Um, for uh, people who are um, we all know there was this delay in getting all the final 12 Zartan. If you ordered all of it together because of the psych out nightstand, um, they started shipping those out. People are getting that. Uh, they just announced this past week that they were, they said to basically go to your job and make sure your address is correct. And we're going to do the extra work and put the nightstand in the box for, <laughs> red laser and the little flag part that the, the that's, thing a is. Work, that's a lot of work yeah, yeah. well according uh <laughs> since i since i was banned from uh, facebook for a day yeah i went on and i was able to troll lanny since he, he, <laughs> he blocked me uh he actually left fun pub at the end of uh november right so i don't know sure who all's left besides uh karen and angie brian and becky that's the only things I can think of because uh, Dave yeah. Lane was let go back around after Joe Con. He said it was like July he was gone. So, yeah. but yeah, um, so make sure your address is correct. So you can get the uh, final of the final FSS uh, shipment to your yourself. Um, I can't see. wait for Ed to explode when they find out the 13th is Snake Eyes. <laughs> uh, you go. Well, if you say it's Snake Eyes, I'll be refunding somebody their money back. <laughs> I'm actually one of those crazy people that collect every single Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, so I actually want it, but I have I, I can't defend that. <laughs> you really can't. There are way too many of those figures. I don't know why. It's just yeah. a sickness. Uh, so, yeah. So, um, the club is sold out of Zartan. Um, I, when they sent the email out, like – it was a strange email. It came out at like 11, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. They said there was very limited quantities, and someone said there was only eight left. I actually went and got one as soon as I got that email. Woohoo! So just I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get that one. And I got mine, and I'm, I'm happy with the figure. It's just the bike, I think, is a complete waste. Yeah. Uh, 
It is yeah. what it is. I know a lot of people wanted the vintage. Uh, what is it? The Ram bike? I can't remember. Uh, everyone was wanting the Ram. Yeah, the Ram bike. I think it was, was the one they got us, or the vin- what they really uh, wanted. It's what they wanted. Yeah, I actually yeah. like the bike that it comes with, but I already have one from that Storm Rider figure, so. That's why I ended up choosing not to get it. The Zartan is cool. I'll, I'll admit, it was cool. Yeah. I just, uh, another one of my rules in collecting is I try to collect only one figure per character. It kind of helps uh, keep my sanity and, you know, not spend all my uh, resources, you know. I understand that. Yeah, so those will be coming out, I figured, this week. Uh, for other people who don't follow his or our group on uh, Facebook, um, something that's very interesting was that um, – there was a uh, a Chinese scalper, I guess we'll call him, over in Hong Kong. I'm assuming he worked for the factory. I grabbed one. Did, which one did you get? Uh, the African-American um, uh, uh, night soccer. Night soccer. Okay, so here's what the deal is, is that somebody over in Hong Kong is getting his hands on a bunch of these figures, yep. and he would sell them for $20 a pop. Five dollars, $15, five dollars shipping. I said, I oh, can't wow. go wrong here, I'll get it. I ended up getting a blizzard yep. for uh $19.99 plus the five shipping. Now, granted, I'm getting it not with high expectations in yeah. case these are rejected figures. In case they don't, the, the, the listing does say they came uh sealed, uh, sealed. You're right, hold on a second, Bobby Vallett. This is for you. <laughs> he just want me to give him a shout out real quick yeah hopefully we're gonna, have, we're gonna have bobby soon again on the show he is he's been teasing some pictures out there oh, of yeah. what he's got going on and he's kind of like a little cock tease and i don't like that <laughs> so he's gonna, i think huh? his, i think his gag order is up too so i'm really looking forward to that oh i'll be waiting for that episode when he <laughs> when he still well you know and i don't want him to go off to where he hurts himself later on down the road I agree. He's got to be careful. Yeah. So, I mean, now knowing that we say, you know, maybe his gag order is up. Hey, Bobby, Hasbro's looking for some guys. <laughs> might as well double dip. They done paid you. So you might as well go back and mix. I, that, that's an episode someone wants me to talk about on the Angry Mike show. And it's <laughs> something I will talk about because it is some really class A horse shit that Hasbro would let these fine men go from the brand, then turn around and say, oh, hey, we needed some new guys over here. Yeah. You, I dumb ass ass. you just fired everybody, you dumbasses. I cannot believe I saw that today. I'm like, are you serious? Yep. Couldn't believe it. So I won't get too much into that because I want to say that for another yeah. episode. But, yeah, um, give uh, Bobby a shout-out. He wanted a shout-out. Um, he texted me. He's like, hey, man, give me a shout-out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, Bobby's a great guy. Bobby actually, um, if you don't know, he designed the, uh, he did the build for yeah. Zartan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he did a lot of he, he did a lot of the work on the, uh, he, and I'll, I'll say this too. You know, I didn't get the final offerings, but that's mainly because I was out of Joe by '87, so, and I'm not a completist. So the figures I get from the club, I get them because I like them, and if I don't like them. I don't, and it's nothing against the build or even the paint job necessarily. I just like I don't really care for those characters. Sonic Fighters, nothing for me. Same, kind of like me with the uh, um, the Ninja Force and the Ninjas we've been getting the last two FSs. I'm not a Ninja guy by any means. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, of course I put them up. I mean, not trying to knock anything. You got to think Bobby worked on most, most or all of them. Um, the one that disappointed me the most, that of course I didn't keep, was that. It wasn't the Bobby. It was the factory who glued the helmet on. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, of course, Bobby's talked about the Hawk. We don't want to be a dead horse, but those things happen. Bobby's in a great work overall on the line. And his from the Missile Command to uh, so many things he's done. He did that. Uh, what's the uh, the fist? The Infinity Fist for Hasbro? Infinity, God, man, I am so trying to get me another one of those. <laughs> I, I've been going back and forth on eBay on them. You know, there yeah. were two at my Walmart. And they the clearance had just hit, so they went from 88 to 64. Yeah. And I'm like, see, and I have Bobby coming to my show in uh, June. So I was like, okay, so I want to buy one for myself, buy one for Bobby to autograph, and I was going to raffle it off. Nice. And I left Walmart, went home to get another credit card, oh. came back, oh. both gone, devastators were all gone. Someone came in there and just cleaned it all out, every bit of it. Like, yeah. you've got to be kidding me. 
But I really, think, I mean, Hasbro, I don't know. They got to do what they got to do, but they screwed up by letting him go. He's a pretty talented dude, so. Well, hail Amanda, hail Amanda, Daryl. Oh, yeah, sure. And Mark Webber. Webber. And Mark yeah. Webber. I mean, just some great guys. So, who, as you know, have a love for the brand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to get people back in there that have a love for the brand. So, that's what I'm. No, you're just going with the check. Yeah. So, well, we're going to cut the show there. Um, I want to let everyone know, to um, if you get a chance, we are on uh, Facebook, the uh, unofficial G.I. Joe Collectors Club. Uh, this is the end page. Uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell your friends about it. Hopefully they can like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, thanks a lot. I mean, we, Thank you. Uh, I, you know, just, you know, we wanted to do something different as far as an episode, you know, yeah. besides the total bashing of the club like we usually do. <laughs> but, it's kind of, you know, we're, we're, you know, when the club runs out of stuff for us to bash about, we'll, you know, Hey, I'm, still glad, I'm still glad they existed in the first place, though. I have great memories. I went to five of the last six Jokons with my son. Just great memories there. So I'm still, I'm glad they existed. Faults and right. all. And I've enjoyed uh, going to them and and giving them hell. I guess I could say. <laughs> Over the past. I mean, I started Botcon in 2010. Yeah. And then I went to Joke. My first Jokon in 14 it was in Dallas because it was so close for me. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I'll just go check it out. And then, of course, Savage came up to me at the end of the show. He was like, so what would you think? You know, and because he knew that's the reason why I came was yeah. because of that. And then I got back into it, you know, collecting the figure. The, that year set was awesome because it was zombies. I thought that was badass. That was cool. So I went, from, you know, from 14 until the end. I went all the way, and, you know, and had a good time, you know, parachute drop and, you know, running these pages and being admins on different pages now. So, I mean, I enjoy, I always tell people that the Joe community is a little bit better or a lot better than the Transformer community. And people always bitch about the GI Joe community, but trust me, Transformers is a whole <laughs> lot different beast. So, yeah. But uh, guys, we'll be back on in uh, two weeks. Hopefully Fred will be back with us by then. And then we'll have a, we'll think of something else. Uh, and, uh, Guess that's it. Uh, Y'all can you know find me everywhere as Justin Air GI Joe Show. Uh, you can find Rob on um, his tank as Aussie ninety two. Is that right? Right, Aussie ninety two on Instagram as well, but Perfect. not Twitter. But not Twitter. Not Twitter. No way, sir. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks for everyone who watched, and I uh, hope uh, if you got any questions, feel free to uh, message me. Leave messages. Find me somewhere. Ask me a question. I'll do the best I can to answer it for you. But uh, thanks, for everyone, for jumping on. And thank again for Rob and Matt for uh, jumping on for the show tonight. Thanks for doing these shows, man. Yeah, thank you.